We're going to start with some speakers who are going to talk about the crisis in the Labour Party and opportunities for change. And our first speaker is Graham Bash. Are you ready, Graham? Um, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, comrades, welcome. Um, Labour in exile. What an excellent name for our campaign of resistance. It embodies that unity of opposites, of where we are and what we must become. So firstly, where are we? Well, we are in opposition, have no doubt. In opposition, firstly, of course, to this right-wing government, a government which has put profit before the health of our people, achieved the highest rates of COVID deaths in the world, and which is preparing to ensure that the massive costs of the pandemic are paid for by the working class, the poor and the dispossessed. There is, of course, a movement of resistance within the trade unions, with climate change protests, the Black Lives Matter movement, and how desperately we need a Labour Party to try to connect these struggles and to provide a political, governmental alternative. But that Labour Party no longer exists or rather ex exists at the grassroots, but certainly not in the leadership. For we are in opposition to within the Labour Party. At the 2019 general election with the toppling of Jeremy Corbyn and the election of Starmer as Labour leader, the left has suffered a very serious defeat. We have been pushed to the margins at best or worse, suspended and expelled, pushed out for telling the truth the truth about the exclusion of Jeremy Corbyn, on anti-Semitism in the party, on the report of the Equalities and Human Rights Commission, even talking about the witch hunt can get you witch hunted. And then there was this from a regional officer, I'm not making it up, it is beyond parody. He wrote, quote, the motions on freedom to debate are not in order and should be removed from the agenda. Now, in my 52 years as a Labour member, this is the worst attack on free speech I've ever experienced. But the attack on the left goes way beyond the attacks on free speech. These attacks on free speech are just a symptom of a greater malaise in the leadership of our party. Above all, it's invisibility, timidity, failure to oppose the Spycox bill, the sacking of Rebecca Long Bailey on trumped up charges of supporting anti-Semitic conspiracy theories, when in fact she was sacked for being too close to the agenda of the National Education Union. It's also the attacks on Black Lives Matter as a moment, not a move, uh, as a moment, not a movement. It's shrouding itself in the Union Jack. It's running away from the Green New Deal and the more radical parts of our manifesto under Jeremy Corbyn. Labour is now to the right of the Tories and opposing corporation tax rises. And now also the scrapping of Labour's shortlist of candidates for Liverpool mayor because Labour's leaders were afraid of what the members might decide. Labour has returned to being a safe pair of hands for the establishment. As that august journal, the Dorset Eye, put it, Starmer has broken the Labour Party in under a year. Daniel Kabedi, teacher and NEU vice president, said this, the only thing that can protect us from a government that doesn't value the lives of ordinary people is organised trade unions in the workplace. It is the NEU and other organisations of resistance, not Labour's front bench, that are the real opposition. Even Marcus Rashford is a more effective opposition than Starmer. Yes, we, whether still in the Labour Party or forced out, are in the wilderness. We are in exile. But the very word exile implies, presupposes its opposite, our determination to return. To return to Labour, not in its current politically bankrupt and corrupted form, but to a Labour Party that we must begin to rebuild. The basis in embryo already exists. Within the party, what is remarkable is how party members and constituency Labour parties have resisted without leadership from the top. In so many parties, we have said, no, we do not accept your diktat. We will tell the truth. 
There are at least 80 CLPs which have defied the instruction to be silent. And 160 secretaries and chairs of 235 CLPs who have written a letter of protest to the general secretary elect. And now the trade union led campaign for a recall Labour Party conference, a campaign we should of course fully endorse. Organisations of resistance are springing up all over the place. Our task is not to compete with them, but to embrace them and help unite them. We must connect and unite from the bottom, link up with the left of the NEC, the trade unions and beyond. We must build alliances, break out of our isolation, link the different wings of our movement, and above all, focus on building the resistance on the ground, often outside of the formal structures of the Labour Party. Because this is a fight that will not be won just within the CLPs. Our strength is that of the working class, the labour movement, all those in struggle. Only on that basis of class struggle, of bringing that class pressure from outside into the party, can we ever make the Labour Party fit for purpose. The dangers engulfing us are terrifying and worldwide. None of the countless millions suffering from forest fires, floods and pandemics across the planet will be inspired by a Labour leadership which waves its tainted and reactionary national flag. Our flag, our international flag, is red. We are part of a global movement of resistance. Yes, comrades, it is a fight within the Labour Party, but it is more, much more than this. We have a world to save. Thank you, comrades.